Scorpio. Hello, Scorpio. This is your May forecast for 2014. And so, yes, April uh, was a big grand square, and uh, we still have that going on uh, for the most part here. Also, as we head into uh, June, okay, so we just came out of April. If you're listening to this on the April end, you might still be feeling some of that turmoil, uh, but we're, we're just entering into it. And so, yes, uh, we're still a little bit captivated, um, but there is celebration at the end of this, okay? So we want to stay positive. We want to look at these things that we're birthing forward right now. Who said it was ever easy to give birth? Just ask any female here that has done that, right? <laughs> so you guys get to, to feel a little bit, at least on the spiritual, emotional, uh, practical side of life right now as we're, we're pushing through uh, the canal, making major decisions. Uh, they are very deeply felt because Pluto is involved, uh, Mars is involved, we've got Uranus involved, and we've got Jupiter involved. So it, it's very fierce energies, and uh, there may be big surprises coming to you this month uh, if they didn't already for some of you come in April. May is still very so attuned to bring you those changes. And I'd like to say the more you are uh, aware, consciously, uh, to take on these uh, choices and changes uh, upon yourself, then you're more in control. Okay, you're ahead of the game. And it's better to feel empowered than have things come at you unexpectedly and go through the OMGs of what just happened here. I didn't know, right? So it's good to know this is where astrology really, really helps us to anchor in, to, to rise our consciousness to see things, you know, at distance and also in perspective. So we may make those wise changes. But um, for you, let's just talk a little bit about the areas where this is going to be uh, affecting you in your life. Um, you have Mars and uh, then Uranus, which is the one opposition. Mars is your 12th house uh, this month. So you're going to see how everything is going to be so attuned to your deeper thinking. Uh, your spiritual needs, you're going to feel more need to kind of pull back uh, and recharge, replenish, should I say, your, your inner battery. And you can only do that by taking certain actions uh, and decisions for yourself. It's so easy for you, uh, Scorpio, to, to look at the other's needs. and um, But for you now, it, it is uh, definitely uh, to, to look at your daily routines because See, over here, the opposite end of the stick is Uranus in your um, sixth house. And that has everything to do with streamlining uh, this uh, for you, your your day-to-day -day routines. And Uranus wants to break away from some of it, which has had you feeling strapped in, okay? It's like Uranus wants to go like this, wants to break some chains, right? And in that, the, the need for, for this change is coming from Mars up here in the 12th. So they're, they're like at both ends of the stick here, and something wants to snap. This is a good thing for you, Scorpio, to be able to do so. And this is why I want you to stay positive. It might hurt a little bit to find the path, uh, whatever outer circumstances that are around you. Okay, but as this gives, Ultimately, you're going to see that you will have uh, a sense of newfound freedom. Um, and you've been thinking long time over this. You know, Mars here in this area for you has been since December, okay? And normally Mars takes six weeks. We've got eight months. You have it to July 25th where you're trying to figure out exactly how to direct that energy, okay? What is the most creative way? And you're feeling a deeper need over time, too, to be able to catch up with and express your your creativity and your spirituality. Now, Uranus is going to help you do that by, by releasing something. Then we have the other opposition, which is making up the other two points in that grand square, and that's Pluto and Jupiter. We spoke about that in May. No, in April, I'm sorry. And we're still at it, okay? So it's not that I'm repeating myself, but the planets are still here. And uh, so we have this hangover that we're working on. 
and this Jupiter really wants to travel, to experience, to reach for, for higher grounds, more spiritual, metaphysical grounds, and maybe life hasn't given you all that much time over these last few years, and Jupiter is calling you forward to connect, reconnect perhaps too, for many of you, uh, to the to source. And uh, source for you is everything now. It is where you see your connection. It's what makes life worth living. Uh, it gives you purpose and insight and reason for uh, all the um, situations that we challenge ourselves through, right? Without it, what's the purpose anyway? So I, I see a lot of you wanting to maybe take on some classes to expand your consciousness. Uh, there's so many different ways to, uh, and levels uh, to do so. Reiki, yoga, all those kind of things. But Pluto also, uh, on the other end of that, because if you're going to go study, if you're going to go off and do that, well, then it, it's also going to uh, come in and I won't say interfere with, but you're going to have to make some alterations and changes in the third house where Pluto is and that has to do with communication. You might be communicating stronger but Pluto is your ruler, see? So um, it being in the third house is allowing you to now start voicing and verbalizing your needs whereas in the past I think you've just been taking on and taking on you know all the burdens, all the obligations around you uh, because you are so conscious of wanting to, to live up to and follow through with commitments. That's who you are. Uh, and Saturn here has just been, you know, adding it on layer by layer last couple of years. So, so right now you're at a point of feeling burnout. Uh, and uh, that's always good news, only in one sense. And that is, if you're at a burnout point, that means that change is coming. Because uh, after that, there's only new beginnings, right? And that burnout is coming from Pluto that has infused Mars in such a way. This is why we want to stay now very happy and excited for the changes. But don't sit and just wait for it to come. You know, uh, there, there's a, a few people who think, oh, this sounds so good, but where is it? You know, it's not going to come if you just sit and do nothing. We have to open up our, our, our chakras, we have to open up our mind, we have to be curious beings of where do I want to go, where do I want to expand. You know, you have to participate in the energy for the energy even to find you, right? So, so we always want to ask ourselves, are we doing what we're needing to do right now? Where is my purpose? And when we ask the right questions to the universe, then be alert to listen, to take in, and you will get your answers. They will come to you in form of inspirations that will guide you and put you on to the next track. All right, a little bit about that. So now let's look at Venus. Love this month here for you, Scorpio. Well, you know, April was a good month in the overall for it because it has been transiting through Pisces, your fifth house of love and uh, joy and expansion in those areas. Um, finding new love for those of you who are single, uh, great, great time April for that. And also to catch up on hobbies and sports and leisure and uh, the arts and so forth too. But now it is, as we're heading into May, May 3rd, it is going to leave this area and into your sixth house where we're going to start focusing once again a little bit more on our daily routines. and putting some love into it, love into our health and love into the diets that we, the foods that we eat and uh, streamlining perhaps um, uh, the work around the house too and not doing it uh, as labor but doing it as a love of labor, it will come that much easier to you. And April might have been a month where there was a lot of uh, focus on children. Uh, extra time perhaps spent with them in, in a very playful manner. Now it's more about getting the kids back up into their routine, you know, and disciplining in a good way, uh, showing them how to straighten and get, you know, order in their little lives as well. Then we have, um, let me jump to Jupiter, ninth house. We spoke about that in the Grand Round Trine. And uh, also now uh, uh, the Sun and Mercury is in your 7th house for love and relationships this month. 
where Venus was in the fifth house for, for love and pleasure and new love, seventh house is more the committed love, okay? Your significant other or if you're single, uh, the people that you work with very closely one-on-one, -on -one, this is where the focus is going to be this month and uh, communicating maybe a little bit more. Not that you don't communicate with your partner, but every once a year we get a few weeks uh, in this area where you can really connect deeper and knowing that that is the month of May for you, Taurus, then you could always mark off May on your annual calendar knowing that that is always one of the best months for you uh, to share with your partner in order to be heard and understood and bringing up more of the deeper things that are important to you where the rest of the year kind of gets washed away with busyness, right? So you will see how you're going to be relating deeply and um, that, I think that's a good carryover since Mars, uh, Venus was just in that fifth house. So now for the Sun and Mercury to kind of add to it and further a little bit more, more along, some of you might just find that you're going to uh, agree upon deeper commitments, maybe tying the knot and so forth. Wonderful time for you Scorpions uh, to get married here in this month. So let's start off to see what we have here at the top of the month. We have a Mercury, which is communication, anything written, written contracts and so forth, um, being discussed. And I say discussed because it may not be settled or finalized today because this Mercury here, communication isn't sitting maybe 100% right with you or with the partner. Uh, it is opposing Saturn and Saturn saying, well, do you have this or that done? We need this and that before we can settle. Or it might be you questioning, uh, you know, Saturn and saying, well, will I get this or that out of it? You know, th it's a little bit more negotiation. But that's okay, though. After the seventh, you're going to be good to go on this. You're going to get that green light. On the third also, we have Venus moving out of Pisces, which was that fun fifth house, moving into your sixth house. On the fourth, we have the sun, which is the essence of you now being powered up with a trine to Pluto. And Pluto being your ruling sign, this is a great trine to have. Uh, there's, I, I see this surge of energy, you know, coming deeply, uh, both from above and also from within and coming up. And there's something connecting here at the heart level for you. And I also feel <clears throat> that there can be a very powerful, <clears throat> maybe even beautiful and transformative communication between you and a partner. Followed on the 6th, we've got Jupiter 2 coming in, also beaming some glorious uh, beams from uh, Jupiter. Jupiter wanting to expand with generosity, with joy. Great news here, and this is in the area for you uh, from the 7th to 10th house. So uh, it could be uh, in a cooperation or a partnership that you're working on or working with. Good news of expansion. Maybe you're going to land a contract, for example, here on the 6th. Then from the 7th, uh, Mercury is going to be moving into chatty sign of Gemini, and so communication should fall that much easier, more open. Uh, for you also, it's in the 8th house, so more private stuff can be discussed in an easier way, okay? It's the house of intimacy. So Mercury is going to love to communicate here. Uh, it's also holding secrets or sharing secrets, too. On the 11th, Venus and Mars, well, they're going to be at odds, okay? So just mark this on your calendar because there's a little trickiness to the couple of days following the 11th, okay? So we're kind of like gearing up uh, to a little bit of a process, and we just want to make sure, too, that your Mars isn't going to be too trigger-happy uh, because of the, the energy it's receiving from Uranus and Pluto and with these little misunderstandings that might just now take place. Under the opposition of Venus and Mars, well, oh, you, you're pulling in different directions. This could be you and your partner. If you're single, always get that question, what about us who are single? Uh, not in a relationship, and you, you speak of relationships. Well, recall that I say this, you are always in a relationship, whether you're single or in a partnership, but you're always in a relationship with yourself, 
<clears throat> okay, because we, we all have that Venus Mars going on on the inside, the feminine, the masculine, right? Uh, the dynamic force and the, the loving force. So uh, how is your relationship with you? You know, do you have a harmonious, happy relationship? Do you uh, hear the good voice that's chatting, chatting you up? <clears throat> or do you have that inner voice that kind of brings you down? You know, so you always want to monitor that relationship to keep it balanced. So, but on the 11th here with this opposition, you might be, you know, uh, at odds with yourself or with that partner, and then there might be a communication or something being shared or mentioned that might create some confusion, might be a little deception even. Uh, you know, we don't really like when uh, Mercury is squaring Neptune, Neptune, which is so beautiful when it comes to spirituality and all those ideal, you know, beautiful vibrations. But when it's in a negative, lower vibe, well, then we have lies and deceptions and so forth, or unclarity. Uh, it's like speaking through fog, right? It might not give you the full picture. So you're, you're not too happy here on the 11th. And then the 12th, though, I will say that Mars is going to kick in and try to fix it, you know. So, so don't try to, you know, um, suppress or... Uh, hold back. Why? Because then it can fester. That will create more drama down the road. Mercury is being supported by uh, Mars here on this day. So you could kick into action to kick, uh, kiss and make up. And for those of you who do, you'll be happy you did. For those of you not wanting to take that first step because you're too proud, well, it will come maybe around and bite you in the bud here on the 14th when Venus squares on Pluto because here we go again first we were opposed to Mars now Venus is squared to Pluto which is even more uh, deeper and more feisty than Mars so we might you know really have a situation on the 14th plus not only that on the 14th not only Venus Pluto square but we got the full moon here also, that's going to be visiting with Saturn uh, in your sign, you know, so we have a very serious, <clears throat> serious full moon uh, this month because it's in that deep sign of Scorpio. It's your sign. You know how to deal with your depth. That's good. But maybe your partner is not a Scorpio and might, you know, have some apprehensions here for the depth that uh, he or she might be feeling, right? Because you're both going to be experiencing that full moon. So when we have the square and then we got the full moon Pluto, well, you know, yes, be careful. And this is where I'm saying, do not be too trigger happy and say, ah, you know, and just leave the situation. Or do not throw an ultimatum out there. Now in relationships, that very seldom works. By putting an ultimatum on your partner, you're probably the one who will lose out. Okay, just like if a partner puts an ultimatum on you, he or she might just lose up because you don't want to be controlled or told, do you? Neither do they. So, you know, no trigger happiness here. Watch out for your Mars. Mars here is asking you to balance it. It's in the sign of Libra, okay? So think about these reactions on the other end, not just your own right now. Now, if you do this, you can balance this really well, Scorpio. Why? Because Mercury is coming in here with a sextile. Uh, to Venus. So if you can take a deep breath and let go of Mars, which wants to be trigger happy, let go of it and then listen to your heart, Venus, and then reason yourself through. Communication here can work. It's beautifully aligned to Venus and then Mercury is also beautifully aligned to Uranus, which might just, you know, turn the whole situation around uh, magically. Out of the blue, who would have known? going from this big potential blow up to this big healing, you know, and it's all about putting our vulnerability aside. Uh, the only thing we ever, you know, in life or in relationships need to fear is fear itself, right? So, so I'd say, you know, try to stifle Mars and Pluto, go with love, know you're going to go through it. And then for those of you who didn't take the, the, the pride road or path, you will have a big surprise here on the 15th. And uh, you will see that, who who would have thought a couple of days earlier, but there is such good news here 
uh, unexpectedly, perhaps too, and it could be an unexpected gift, but this is uh, Venus and Uranus, which then is in your sixth house. It's in the sign of Aries, so it, it, it could be a fun thing, a very fun thing here. But you're going to be tested. You know, how real was whatever commitment you made there on the 15th? Was it, you know, something you really meant? Was it something he or she really meant? Whatever they promised, whatever you promised. Here on the 18th, Venus now, which has been doing the up and down dance this whole last week, will now be squaring Jupiter, Jupiter ruling truth. So, you know, your partner may come to you and say, well, how committed are you really? You know, uh, did you really mean what you promised? Or you may be asking your partner, or it could be your boss. Uh, but the thing is, it's more like now is the time to stand up to and then push through with it. The sun will move into Gemini. This is your area here of also the house of intimacy. It is also the house of uh, shared resources. There may be news of money coming to you, if owed to you, um, through either some banking or uh, could be insurance companies, royalties, commissions uh, from your partner. But this is where you're going to be working here through the month of May, looking over uh, those investments. And then the 24th, we have Jupiter and Saturn <clears throat> now really creating a beautiful radiant beams uh, together in a train. So you'll come to see here that those things that you have been really rooting for, um, trusting, uh, wanting to come together now is coming together and some of you might be traveling and then I'd say maybe even out of country here uh, <clears throat> now around the 24th this is when uh, the Sun and Jupiter um, and also Jupiter Saturn here coming into this trine uh, which is going to give you a good grounding okay and uh, the 28th great communication Venus uh, Mercury working together really well and then Venus then moving out of Aries and into your seventh house so uh, if you've been out and about traveling you'll be coming back home to your partner and that should be a very loving month you're setting yourself up for into June we're going to talk more about love and relationships and what that's going to bring you uh, next month uh, but yes just as uh, Venus is moving into this area uh, Mercury too is going to be ingressing into Cancer so for you, that's going to be your ninth house. So that's going to be also a month with potential travels. It could be short distance as well as long distance into to June. So Scorpio, we're going to end this month with uh, the Sun training Mars. So as you can see, even though we've had that big square, uh, there's still so many beautiful aspects in between here that's going to be highlighting you. And then, of course, now we're, we're putting behind us the aspects of the square and feeling that we're powering ahead, feeling strong, stronger perhaps than in a long time, okay, because you've been on this journey from, uh, I'd say September, October to now, so that's a good six months of uh, deeper, uh, serious things. Okay, that is what I have. I think I brought everything in here to you, Scorpio, for May. I will see you next month, so do listen to your moon and your rising sign. And have a good one now.